In this video, I'll be showing you step by step how to build this habit tracker in Notion. It's inspired by James Clear's groundbreaking book, Atomic Habits, and will help you build better habits and actually make them stick. The tracker incorporates all of the key principles from the book. So let's start by giving you a tour of the tracker and then I'll show you step by step how to build it for yourself. So this habit tracker allows you to track good habits and bad habits. So on these two tabs here, we have an overview of the habit and a few details here that are inspired by the key principles from the Atomic Habits book. So as we actually build the tracker, I'm going to explain exactly what all of these different columns are here. We have a very similar setup here for the bad habits as well. And then finally, we also have this tracker tab, which is where you can actually track how you're doing with the habits. So this is a weekly habit tracker. So you can just check off the boxes each day of the week that you either do the habit if it's a good one. And obviously, if it's a bad habit, you can check it off if you do not do the bad habit. And we also have this weekly progress bar here as well. So you'll check these boxes throughout the week. And then at the end of the week, you can simply click this button here to reset set the week and that will just auto uncheck all of the boxes for you so it's just resetting it for a fresh start to the new week. So that is the tour of the tracker so now I'm going to show you step by step how to set this up for yourself and if you are enjoying the video so far then don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any upcoming videos. So we're going to start off by adding a new database so I'm going to type in forward slash database and select database in line and I'm just going to name it our atomic habits tracker. I'm then going to click on these three dots here and just hide the database title because it looks a little bit better without it and we're also just going to delete the default tags property as well. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just add in a few habits into the tracker just so that we've got something to work with. So the first one could be journal every day, a daily yoga session, and I'm also going to add some bad habits in here as well. So let's put scrolling on social media and alarm snoozing. Okay, so there we have a few habits to start with. So the next thing that I want to be able to do is select if the habit is a good habit that I want to start doing or a bad habit that I want to stop doing. So we're simply just going to add a select property to select if it's a good or bad habit. So let's add a new property by clicking on this plus symbol and I'm going to type in select and we're going to go with this select property here. So I'm going to name this one type and then we're just going to add a few options here. So I can add the first option which is good habit and the second option is going to be bad habit okay so these are now our two options and just to make it even more obvious make sure that the bad habit is red and the good habit let's put a background of green I also just want to add a couple of emojis in here just to make it even more obvious that this is a bad habit and these are good habits so I'm just going to open my emoji editor quickly okay so for the bad habit let's do a red cross like this one I'm just going to add that in here so it's the emoji and then it says bad habit and for the good habit let's do a green check mark so let's go with this one like that so this is now what the options look like and then just going to close this off so now I'm just going to select for each of the habits that I've added in here what type of habit it is so journal every day is a good habit so is daily yoga session whereas these two are bad habits and I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller as well so just before we jump back into the tutorial I just want to mention that my new second brain template is now available on my store it's a super advanced all-in-one productivity system I'll leave a link in the description box below if you're interested so that's all back to the tutorial. So the next thing we're going to do is add a progress property so we can select the current progress for each of the habits. So again, this is going to be a select property. So let's add another property and it's going to be select. And this one we're just going to name progress. And I'm going to click on here to add a few options. So the first option is going to be not started for any habits that I've not started working on yet. And we can have in progress, paused, off track and doing great. Okay, so these are the different options that I've added in. I'm also just going to change the colors of these so that they match what is written in there. So not started can be gray, in progress can be yellow. Okay, so I've just updated the colors here. So as you can see, the colors now reflect a little bit more of what's written. So doing great is going to be green as an example. Let's close that off. And I'm now just going to select one of these options for each of the habits. So I'm just going to select them at random. Okay, so you can use that column just to keep track of where you're at with the habits. Obviously, eventually you want to make sure all of them are doing great ideally. Okay, so the next property we're going to add is is going to be a text property and it's where we're going to add in why we want to work on this habit so let's add another property it's going to be a text property and i'm simply just going to name this one why question mark and that's all we need to do so we then have this text box here where you can simply just input why you want to work on the habit so for journal every day i could say that it helps me think clearly and reflect so i'm just going to fill this in for all of the habits okay so i've just filled out the why for all of the habits and for the negative ones i've inputted obviously why it's not a good habit so in this case, I've put that these two are wastes of time and they're not productive. Okay, so now I want to have two different tabs, one for all of my good habits and one for the bad habits. So I'm actually just going to rename this tab. So I'm just going to select it and rename. And this one can be for our good habits. And I'm also just going to change the icon as well. Let's put it as a thumbs up. 
So as this is the good habits tab, I only want to see habits that have a type of good habit. So let's add a filter and we're gonna filter by type and I'm just gonna select good habit. So now that we've added that filter, as you can see the bad habits have disappeared and we now only have our good habits, which is perfect. So now let's set up the bad habits tab. So I'm gonna click on this tab and simply duplicate it. And let's change the name here to bad habits. And I'm also just gonna change the icon as well. So let's change it to a thumbs down. And then we also just need to change the filter as well. So if I click on filter, I can just change this instead of good habit, we'll change it to bad habit. And as you can see, that's now updated on here. So we're just pulling through the bad habits. Okay, so let's go back over to the good habits tab. So we're now gonna start adding some of the principles that James Clear talks about in his Atomic Habits book. Now, one of the key ones that he talks about is make it obvious. So let's add a text property for make it obvious. So I'm gonna click on the plus symbol here, type in text and select this. And we're just gonna name it make it obvious. Okay. So in this text box here, we're going to type in exactly when and where we're going to do the habit. So that's essentially trying to make it obvious of when you will complete this habit. You can also incorporate habit stacking too, which is something that James Clear also talks about in the book. So that's essentially where you pair your new habit with an existing one. So let's say that I brush my teeth every single day. That's an existing habit. So why don't I do my journaling every single day just after I brush my teeth? That's a really effective way to ensure that you are journaling every single day. And don't forget to Add the location as well so where are you going to be doing this habit as well so for the journal everyday habit i'm simply going to write in my living room because that's where i'm going to do the habit and then when am i going to do it i'm going to do it after brushing my teeth i'm going to do the same thing for the daily yoga session so where am i going to do it i'm going to do it in my living room and then when am i going to do it you can give a specific time so let's say at 10 a.m after breakfast so breakfast is a habit that i already do every single day and i can also give the time as well to make it super obvious when i'm going to do this habit okay so the next principle that James talks about is making it easy. So let's add another text property. So I'm gonna click on here, type in text, and this one is gonna be make it easy. So that's all we need to do. Now in this box, we're gonna simply write in how we're gonna make doing this habit every single day easy. If you want to have any chance of actually completing the habit, you need to make it as easy as possible. So one example that James includes in the book is he says that if you want to drink more water, then you should place water bottles everywhere in your apartment. Therefore, you're making it super easy to complete that habit. So applying that to the habits that I have in here, the first one was journal every day. So to make it super easy, I'm gonna place my journal and pen on the table. So therefore, it's super easy for me to complete this habit habit every single day. Now for the daily yoga session, I could do something similar. Let's say that I'm gonna leave my yoga mat out on the floor. Okay, so that is the second principle. Okay, so the next principle that we're gonna add is the make it attractive and make it satisfying. So these are actually two different principles in the book, but for the sake of this habit tracker, I am gonna include them as one because I think it's easier just to do them as one. So we're gonna add a one more text property. So text, and this one is gonna be make it attractive. So in this box, we're gonna write how we're gonna make doing the habit every single day attractive or satisfying. So you could, for example, give yourself some sort of reward if you do the habit. So as an example, you could only allow yourself to eat your favorite snack or watch your favorite show after you've completed the habit. So you just want to write something in here to tempt yourself with essentially. So this is super important as you do need a short-term incentive to complete the habit. So for example, if your habit is going to the gym every day, going to the gym will not make you lose weight straight away. So you do need a short-term incentive for actually going instead like watching your favorite TV show as an example. So for our journal everyday habit, for the make it attractive, I'm gonna say that I can watch my favorite show after I've done it. And for the yoga habit, let's just say that I can have a coffee after I've done my yoga session. So that is everything that we're gonna add onto the good habits tab. Let me just make this a bit smaller. So now let's move on to the bad habits tab. So on this tab, all of the new properties that we've just added to the good habits tab have shown up here. So these ones aren't actually applicable to the bad habits. So I'm just gonna click on these ones and just have them in the view so they still exist and you'll still see them on the good habits tab but we just don't want to see them on here so i've just hidden them all now the first one that we're going to add for bad habits is make it difficult so let's add another text property here and call it make it difficult so this is really similar to what we just did on the good habits of making it easy. For bad habits, we want to make them as hard as possible. So you want to think of a way to make completing this bad habit super hard or super difficult. So for the scrolling on social media, one way that I could make that habit really difficult would be to simply just delete all my social media apps. Cause I'm probably not gonna go to the effort of re-downloading all of my apps and logging in again, just to scroll on there for 10 minutes. And for the alarm snoozing, one way that I could make that super difficult would be to place my phone away from the bed so that I have to get up to turn the alarm off. 
And now the next principle that we're going to add is make it unsatisfying. So let's add one more text property onto here and I'm going to call it make it unsatisfying. Okay. So essentially what James talks about is you should give yourself some sort of immediate punishment if you do the bad habit. Now you don't have to go crazy with this. It could just be if I end up scrolling on social media too much in one day, which is a bad habit, I could tell myself that I'm not allowed to watch my favorite show. So I'm gonna type that in here. So now knowing that I can't watch my favorite show if I spend too much time scrolling on social media, that makes doing the bad habit unsatisfying and I'll want to do it much less than I did before. Now for alarm snoozing, I could for example say that I have to skip my hobby or something like that because I've spent too much time laying in bed snoozing my alarm so I now don't have time to do my favorite hobby so again that makes the bad habit seem much more unsatisfying or unattractive okay so that's all of the details that we're going to add about the habits if you do want to add any more notes about the habits then you can simply just open the page here and that will open up this side beak here and you can use the page to actually write some notes but for now I'm just going to leave it as this so now we're going to add the actual tracker so that we can track how often we're actually completing the good habits or how often we're not completing the bad habits so let's add another tab so I'm just going to duplicate this one and I'm going to rename this one tracker and let's just change the icon as well to a check mark like this one so I'm actually just going to hide all of the properties apart from the name of the habit and the type of habit so let's just hide all of these by clicking on them and hiding them again as I mentioned earlier this doesn't delete them it just hides them from this view so they'll still exist elsewhere and I'm also just going to delete this filter as well because I want to be able to see all of the habits so I'll just click delete filter okay so as you can see all of our habits have now reappeared and I'm just going to move the type property to the front as well so it's really easy to see which ones are good habits and which ones are bad habits so to track our daily progress I'm actually just going to add a checkbox for each each day of the week so let's add another property it's going to be a checkbox and I'm just going to call this one mun for Monday and I'm actually just going to make this a little bit smaller so it doesn't take up so much room but I just want to be able to still see the name here so I then just want to duplicate this checkbox for each day of the week so a really quick and easy way to do that is to click on the property select edit property and then I'm just going to click duplicate property six times like this okay so we then have all of our checkboxes and I just need to change the name on each of these so instead of man this one's going to be two for Tuesday and so on so I'm just going to do that for all of these okay so there we have all of our checkboxes one for each day of the week so you can start checking these off every day that you complete the habit or for the bad habits every day that you don't complete the habit and once it gets to the end of the week you're going to want a really easy way just to delete all of the checkboxes so you can start fresh so we're actually going to use a button to do that so just above the table we're going to add in a button so you going to type in forward slash button and select this option and we're firstly going to give the button a name so I'm going to call it reset week and we can also choose an icon here to display on the button so I'm going to choose a circle arrow like this one so now we need to tell it what we actually want the button to do when we click on it so let's add our first step so in this case I want it to edit pages within one of my databases so I'm going to select this option it's going to ask me which database I want to edit pages in so we're going to select our atomic habits tracker you want to just make sure that where it says pages to edit it does say all pages so that just means that it's going to edit the checkboxes for all of the habits within the tracker and then I can tell it which properties to edit so let's start by choosing the Monday checkbox and I want it to become unchecked checked and then going to edit the Tuesday checkbox and again make it unchecked so you just want to add in all of the different checkboxes for the different days of the week and set them to unchecked so essentially once you click the reset button it will uncheck all of the checkboxes in the tracker so I'm just going to do this for all of them okay so this is what it should look like once you've added all of the checkboxes so once it looks like this simply click done and we can now test that the button works so we've got all of these checkboxes checked in here so if I click reset week as you can see it just empties all of the boxes so it's a really quick and easy way just to restart your week okay so the final thing that I want to add on here is a progress bar or a progress ring to show the weekly progress so I can see how well I'm doing for the week so we're actually going to use a formula property to do that so I'm going to click on the plus symbol type in formula and select this one and I'm going to name this one weekly progress okay and to actually add in the formula I'm going to click on the formula edit button which is going to bring up this panel and that's where we're going to actually write in our formula so the progress bar is going to be based on how many of these checkboxes you've checked off so if you checked off all seven of the checkboxes for a particular habit it would go to hundred percent so you've had a hundred percent success that week so in order to convert that into a formula we firstly need to convert each checkbox into a number so the formula cannot understand what a checkbox is 
space, but if we convert it to a number, then it will be able to understand it. So if the checkbox is checked, it will input a number one, but if it's unchecked, it will show zero. So it's just an easy way for us to be able to add this into a formula and work out the percentage of the checkboxes that are checked. So to actually convert the checkboxes into a number, we're going to use the function to number like this. And then inside these parentheses, we're going to add our first checkbox. So if you just look here under properties, you'll see all of the properties within the table. So I'm going to select our Monday checkbox. So it'll look like this. Next, we need to add the next checkbox. So I'm going to put a plus symbol and again, type in to number. And inside these parentheses, we're going to put our next checkbox, which is Tuesday. Again, I'm just going to repeat the process. So then we're going to do the same thing, but for Wednesday and so on. Okay. So once we've done that, we're now going to isolate this formula inside two parentheses. So I'm just going to add one at the end and then one at the start. So this is now isolated. And we then need to divide this by seven. So that's going to give us a percentage of how many of these checkboxes are checked. So once you've added that in, let's click done. And then we also just need to change this number format here from number to percent. So let's now have a look at this. So here we have 0%, which is correct. None of these checkboxes are checked. So let me just check a few of these off. Okay, so as you can see, now that I'm checking off some of these checkboxes, we are now seeing the percentage, but it is quite a long, ugly number. So we actually want to round this down to a more simple percentage. So let's head back to the formula to round this off. So the first thing we need to do is again, isolate this formula. So I'm gonna add another parentheses at the end and then another one at the start. And we actually want to multiply this entire thing by a hundred like this. Again, isolate that with some more parentheses. So one at the end, one at the start, and I'm then going to type our round function at the start. Again, open a parentheses here at the start and again, close it at the end. And finally, we're going to divide this entire thing by a hundred. Okay. So once you've done that, you can click done. And as you can see now on our weekly progress, we've got rid of all those annoying decimal points and we've got a more simple percentage. Now, the final thing I want to do is turn this into a progress ring. So I'm going to click on weekly progress edit the property and I can actually select a bar. So if you want to see a progress bar like this, or in this case, I'm actually going to select a progress ring because I quite like the look of that. And you can play around with the color as well. So instead of green, let's make it purple, for example. So now as I check these off, as you can see, the progress bars over here are increasing, which is really cool. And then remember at the end of the week, you can simply click the reset week and that will delete all of the check boxes and it will set the progress back to zero as well. And that's it. You can check out all of my pre-made notion templates over on my store, including my new advanced second brain template, which is an all in one productivity system. I'll leave a link in the description box below. And if you did find this video useful, then I'd really appreciate if you could give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as I post new notion tutorials like this one twice a week.